Good afternoon all, CamelbackTrading.org coming to you this Friday afternoon, November 18th, and we are looking at Window Traders Market Profile of the ES and SPY. Well, all in all, I think the Bulls have to be happy with the week, right? We closed last week in SPY at 398.51. We're at 396. So after being up $22 last week, all they did was give back two and a half dollars this week. We spoke about it last weekend. Well, going into last weekend and early in the week, it would be healthy for the Bulls to come back into balance on the daily and get some consolidation. Well, we did that. They took a couple of weird paths to get there, considering we had a 4 or $5 gap yesterday, only to take it all back. And then today, we gap high, only to give that back in B period. But the bottom line is this. We're in balance on the monthly, the daily, and the weekly is up. So yesterday's low becomes a real big focal point because that's last this week's low. So if the Bulls really do want to now come out of this balance on the daily to the upside, you don't want to take out last week's low and put the weekly back into balance right away. Now, we have a shortened week next week. Um, I expect volume to be light. I'm hoping we get ranges of $4. We've had almost the identical range the last two days in a row now, 481 477 you know, so if we get range of $4, we still can't complain even if the volume's light. But there's no real big major news out as far as, you know, the Fed and stuff. CPI and the Fed isn't until next month. <clears throat> so the bulls should have an opportunity to try to grind this higher. I still think the odds of the upside gap getting filled, that large one, for now, are still better than that downside gap. I had a decent day that, uh, today. Again, not the easiest day. Once again, we gapped open and drove straight down. Uh, the thing I didn't put into play, which I should have for my days as a specialist on the, uh, on the stock exchange, when we have these kind of expirations and you get these imbalances, we used to open stocks would, you know, on a pretty good uh, move, either up or down, right? And then they would come in. Now, we could never let them come in as fast as they do these days. We'd be out in handcuffs, but you would still get a pullback because the buying was only just the options expiring and stuff and buying the underlying. So they did provide good opportunities. I should have realized that. Now, I didn't take a long in A. I actually took a short in A to fill the gap. And I, uh, and I, now it didn't fill in A, but I still made money in A. Then in B, <clears throat> I, I took a small long. I thought on the turnover we might pop a little bit. And then I looked for the short to go get the gap. Well, that didn't happen. Took a small loss on that. And then I jumped in uh, on a five-lot short uh, as soon as B started taking out A's low to go get the gap, and that worked out nicely. After that, I didn't do anything until F. It was just chop. I could have and should have taken two shorts here at D&E and, e and used B's high as my out. Didn't do it either time, and both times they rolled over. Shorts would have played today for the most part. They kept getting paid um, until, of course, uh, L&M. and m <laughs> But um, I didn't do that. What I did do is when F took out D's low, I jumped on board with a three-lot um, short to go get the overnight low. So that worked out. Then in G period, I'm like, I don't think we're going to hold single prints. We couldn't take out F's low, so I got long on a three-lot of the mini to go fill the single prints. Then after that, I, that was my last trade. However, there's a couple I wanted. I thought I would get higher to around half back to take a short. Never got there, didn't short it. Then L period, we were talking in the room. I'm like, there's going to be stops up here. H, I, J, K, yesterday's high. I'm like, traders are going to do its work till it doesn't work anymore. Well, what did they do with these four time frames? They shorted it. And what happened? They got paid all the time. So they get bigger and bigger. I just didn't pull the trigger. There's no excuse or whatever. Should have been long. Um, to go pop this because it popped it and boop, right up. So that that would have been uh, the last play of the day. Should have taken it. I did not. Still a good day and a good week overall. All right, let's do destinations and then we'll go over all the charts. So for the upside now, in SPY, 397.81 is today's high and 402.31 is a weekly high. For the downside, 394.70 is our 10 wide point of control from today. 393.04 daily low and 390.14 yesterday's low is a weekly low. For ES on the downside, 59.50 10 wide, 42.50 daily low, 13.75 is our weekly low. 
For the upside, 91.75 daily high, 92.75 daily high, and 39 is our weekly high. So ES did not take out that high. SPY did take out that high by three cents. That's the difference. Okay? Now, let's go to our charts and see what's happening here. So here's Russell. Nothing's changed. We keep going over it. But right now, it's just a big fat balance on the monthly. I would call it a six-month balance, basically. Okay? When it comes out of it, hopefully you're going to get a pretty good move, either to the upside, towards the all-time highs, or to the downside, and see what we get. But big balance on the monthly. Weekly. The weekly is up. It's one time framing up three weeks. So the week, actually, what am I saying? One, two, three, four, five weeks. I apologize. We're one time framing up five weeks in the uh, weekly on the Russell. Now, we're not getting great distance away from previous weeks, but we are still one time framing up. So the weekly is up. And then on the daily, balance. I would call it either a two day balance or a three day balance, probably three. I would use Wednesday, Thursday, Friday as your three-day balance. Okay? So monthly is balance. Weekly is five uh, weeks, one time framing up, up. And the daily is balance. Close below the 200, above the 20. Triple Qs. Balance on the monthly. Depending on how this month ends up, will it be a two-month balance, three-month balance? I'd probably call it a three-month balance, to be honest with you. That's what I'd probably use. So balance on the monthly. Weekly, up. One time framing up two weeks. Daily, balance. Three-day balance. Now, a little different here. Their uh, 20 has not crossed to 50 yet. Again, that's not a big deal to me. But they're going to be crossing on Monday. Um, the important thing is the balance. Which way do we come out of the balance? Right? And which gap do we fill first? Do we fill this downside gap first or this gap from September? So monthly is balanced, weekly is up, daily is balanced. So far, they're all the same. Let's go to us. Three-month balance. So that's the same as the other ones. Weekly, up. One time frame it up, two weeks. Now, one thing I want to sh show you here, which is pretty interesting. Remember we made those lower highs all year in the daily? And then I said we finally broke it. Well, we haven't broken it in the weeklies, you can see. Here's the all-time high in January. Here's the high in March. Here's the high in August. Now we're trying to get a new one. So it'll be really interesting if we ever do get a push up to around that 413 level, which not coincidentally is September's high. Top of our three-month balance. See how those things work out? So I still think, that's why I'm saying, I think we have better odds of testing this and the big gap above us because I think the market might want to grind higher. So here's that gap now, okay? So in the daily, we are in a three-day balance. We sl uh, took out Wednesday's high slightly. Uh, ES did not, right? They missed it by a point or so. So we're in a three-day balance below the 200, above the 20. So the question I've been asking the room, do we test the 20 first? Well, if we test the 20 first, that would be very interesting because that's right above where the gap would uh, start. It's possible. Anything's possible. Or do we test the 200 first, which would mean getting into this gap because the 200 is at 4.0581. Is that right? Yep, 4.0581. That gap starts at 403.11 and gets filled at 408.46. Now, would it be unhealthy to touch the 21st and then go back up? No. But the only problem I have with that is you'd be coming out of balance on the daily again, like yesterday, to the downside. But more importantly, you'd be putting the weekly back into balance. Now, that's still not the end of the world. But again, I'm just looking at how much time's left in the year, all those different factors. Um, if we do start coming into balance in the weekly, would we be able to go and get to around 
that September high. Those are all things we try to figure out in our trading room. Um, another good week uh, explaining things and teaching people. Come check us out at camelbacktrading.org. Thanks for the likes and subscribing on these videos. Have a great weekend. Stay safe. And we'll recap. No, we won't recap. But we'll speak prior to the opening on Monday.